Okay, um, board members, we're ready to go. Um, let's show a little respect for all of our different committees and get ready for this next report if we can. We, we had 15 minutes to take care of business and personal business. Let's get to board business. So, um, Chair Ellis, you are going, are you, what, what are we, you're deferring? Okay. So, Vice, Vice Chair Brittany, Cummins, you're going to do the audit report. Now, we've had all of this in advance also, so we can just follow along. Thank you. And then, with the interest of time, we're trying to get back on schedule. Before lunch, we're going to take care of lawn licensing. Um, Chair Bolter's ready to take that on, so we're going to go a little bit out of sequence to try to catch up. So, um, Vice Chair Brittany Cummins on the audit report. Okay, you'll notice from the audit summary that we had um, a discussion uh, regarding the School Children's Trust uh, compliance reviews, um, and there'll be a motion coming out of that as the next agenda item. Um, we discussed some of the uh, current audits that are taking place and uh, talked about audit calendaring. Um, talked about audit plan and risk and audit requests and we also discussed um, the audit corrective action for audits and how to close those off. So if you'll notice on board docs the next two items are the action items so should I just um, state those as action from the committee? Okay. So item 7.2 is the committee moves that the board approve as priority number three an audit to obtain data on all LEA testing rates, opt-out rates, and the causes and reasons for opt-outs. Okay, my computer's, my computer's down. I'm trying to get it back okay. up, so I'm hurrying. It's, <laughs> it's this one here. Okay, but it's not. Is that how it, she said it here? The school... No, I'm, I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> it is not a, it's not on here but it's on the computer right it is so okay i'm catching you know we can we can do this because we can i'm going to turn it over to vice chair ellis to handle the action. Okay, I don't have your sheet. Here's your, here, take my sheet. <laughs> We're gonna move this along while I get my computer up. Thank you. And then I'll, I'll handle the law and licensing. Oh, she found it. Go ahead. The motion before the board is. I'm my mic. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. Here. Uh, the good. motion before the board uh, is the audit committee moves that the board approve as priority number three an audit to obtain data on all LEA testing rates, opt-out rates, and the causes, reasons for the opt-outs. Uh, motion passes unanimously with board member Ellis absent. So that's not part of the motion. That's not sorry, sorry, that was in audit committee. Okay. So now it's we're the, that's the motion before the board. I apologize. Um, any discussion to the motion? Okay, yep. Um, board member Belknap. Board member Belknap. Thank you. I, a question I have, and, and I'm not sure that this was, and I was in on it, ha have a discussion on this. How are you going to collect information why students choose to opt out? I, I only would believe you could get that information from students or parents. Okay. Debbie, you can turn your, there we go. So Debbie Davis, Director of Internal Audit. Obviously the audit has not been planned at this point, so we haven't delved deeply into what that would look like. Um, obviously, as you said, I think inquiry with parents and students would, would be necessary. Some kind of survey work could also get perspectives from LEAs, teachers, administrators. I think that would be important as well. Um, and obviously we'd want to see feedback from, from the board, from um, experts in this area, as we decide you know, what is the best way to try and go obtain this information. Follow-up. Thank you. Oh yeah, you're running. Okay. I can't run the mic. I guess my I guess my next question is is why is that piece of information why students are opting out 
and, and and this isn't for you, Debbie, but maybe to Chair Ellis or to Vice Chair Brittany Cummings, since she chaired that meeting. Why is that our number three priority in audits? What? How did how did that become more important than some of the other things that are out there looming? I wasn't at audit this month. I apologize. I was actually on a river trip without a signal down in Moab, and so I missed this meeting, but I had a lot of fun. Um, anyways, but Board Member Cummins, I don't know on the prioritization how it, how it got that high up there. <laughs> Did you want to speak to, to it? it uh, the conversation basically just went around the, the timing of the audits that were in place and where this one would fit in. So, like, so when you take, for example, uh, the different audits that were there, it was how would it fit and what would be the best priority, and so it just kind of fit in that spot most efficiently. So, okay, um, do you have a follow-up, or can we move to Board Member Reby? Okay, Board Member Reby. I think this would be a great thing for us to do. We have currently had some problems with our ESSA plan because of opting out, so it would be nice to figure out how this can change. Um, currently, I have received emails about um, people not having the same experiences when they're trying to opt out. So if we could couple that auditing opt-outs with a link to let students opt out, that would give them the information that is accurate and state provided because it is, um, there is a state letter you have to sign and um, some people have mentioned that they don't receive that letter or that it's not the same experience. So I would prefer that everybody had an equal experience without hassle, but I'd also think the information about why is very important and to understand how we can better meet the needs of our communities. Uh, like I've said, we have close to 90% of our population taking this assessment. So to understand why 10 are not, I, I really am curious about that. Thank you. Did you have a response well, to that? I was just going to add, um, so the, the request for this audit originally came from the Standards and Assessment Committee and they requested the Audit Committee discuss it. So the Audit Committee, that was the discussion that we had based on Standards and Assessment uh, forwarding that request. And then as mentioned, um, the ESSA plan currently does have an audit provision. This audit doesn't necessarily meet that provision. They're, they're a little bit different. So. So it, it could inform to ESSA, but it wouldn't meet the provision in ESSA for an, the audit that's required there. That's that's a different item. Thank you. Uh, Board, Board Member Lear. Um, well, let, me, let me just say one more time. I'm not a fan of audits, generally, but I... If, if we just spent, the, talked about the millions of dollars that we're spending on assessments, if we just have tied up, um, we have a, a, an assistant superintendent dedicated to that issue, and we are, if we just spent, what, six months negotiating with the federal government on an, an issue related to assessment and opting out and if that should be allowed by the feds or not, I, I think that we, we have excessive evidence that we need to figure out um, the the um, circumstances of opt-outs and assessments better. I think we need to understand this. I don't pretend that we'll get a perfect understanding um, from, from an audit, but at least we will have some empirical information and we won't just be guessing about why some students take tests and some do not, why some str try and some do not. At least we'll have some empirical information about um, this going forward and I, I think that is responsible given how much time and how much money we're spending on it. Thank you. Board Member Stokes. So could you share with me a little bit of your methodology on how you plan to go about this? <laughs> so we haven't planned the audit. Um, based on priority number three, we'd likely start it around January, February. Um, so having not planned the audit, as mentioned, there would definitely be inquiry. I, I think 
we'd have to be talking with parents, students, LEA administrators, teachers, that would have to be a large part of this, maybe looking at the documentation, the forms that for opt-outs, those kinds of things. And then as mentioned, we'd want to talk to experts and find out what are other variables that we need to consider? Are there other individuals we need to talk to, our associations, things, do they have that information as well? So I'm not going to be here in January um, and try to contain your cheers, but, um, or tears, either one, cheers or tears. Um, but I'm not ready to vote on something like this until I see what the methodology is going to be, because I think this has the potential of being a ginormous PR nightmare. Yes. And yeah, I mean, we've had some of these before that have not resulted well. But if I could see and, and the board were comfortable with the methodology of how you're going to go and reach out, then I'd be completely fine doing it. But just as a piece of advice, if this starts in January and you haven't seen any of the method methodology by then, just you know, fasten your seatbelt because you are gonna hear from parents you're, that are, you're asking kids, you're asking my, it'll be worse than the, the test. Uh, you're asking my child to, to respond to this, you're asking me to respond to it. Um, so anyhow, that's where I'm at. Board Member Stokes, did you want to make an amendment to the motion on the table? I, I, would, I would move that before. Oh, Sorry, I don't have the control board. I would move that before we proceed with uh, approving of the audit on testing opt-out that the methodology be presented to the State Board of Education. Okay, so we have an amendment to the motion, basically. I mean, is that, or do, is that a second, would that be a second motion the way it's written and stated? Well, can I, can I weigh in? Yes. Is, is, is Chair, Chair Hunter. Um, it's, Board Member Stoke isn't adding or taking away anything from the original recommendation. And I might also add that the audit plan, I mean, this is just putting it on the radar. The, the audit plan is approved by whom? I mean, there's, the board. there's board. before it goes out, before we even start the audit process, the board approves what's happening in that. So to speak to board members uh, Stokes' concerns, um, the details will be rolled out before the audit even begins. This is just, we're gonna put it on the, put it on the radar and preparation is gonna take place between now and the first of the year. So it's to be approved. It's not saying do the audit now, it's saying that there's gonna be preparation for it if I might speak to a, to that. So yes. you're chairing this section but Yes, you can speak to that. Okay. So um, we're gonna go back to Spencer. Well I, I would agree with that chair, Huntsman, but we never we put audits in queues, but we never we never look at methodologies of audits. We, we line them up, we approve them. This is, in my opinion, something that is slightly out of the wheelhouse. I mean, an audit is a, is a financial audit, sometimes you do operational, but this is one that's going to extend out beyond what we normally do. And that's why I think it's important that, yes, yeah, sure, you can put this in the queue, but it needs to be put in the queue with the caveat that this is going to happen prior to it going out. We today vote to put it in the queue and it will happen in January. In the I've never seen any other audit come to us and ask for a methodology. Can I? Can I? Yeah. So, so his uh, board member Stokes amendment, if I'm understanding correctly, would be that before the audit work begins that it, it comes back to the board with approval. Well, it goes to the audit and then to the board for approval of the scope of the work. And the methodology the of collection. Am I understanding that? So there's terminology then. Oh, sorry. You're fine. There's terminology that um, an audit that Debbie might be, be able to better phrase what that yeah. is from the plan to get where you want to get. 
Yes, you can help us with the amendment terminology. No, methodology is great. So, so just a clarification on the process. So when the board approves the audit here, it does go into the queue. And then when with staffing and resources available, which we believe will be in January, at that point we would start planning, talking to subject matter experts, um, the audit committee, all of that comes together. We spend up to a month, maybe a little bit more time planning, helps us be more efficient on the back end of the audit as we actually do analysis and get to reporting. So it would be in January as we start that planning um, and the outcome of the planning is an audit program and those are the steps that we follow that would be the methodology that we would follow so at that point we would be able to bring that back to the audit committee and then the board if you want to see the methodology at that point we would bring the audit program and, and you could approve that before we embark on actually going to the analysis phase of the audit okay so is that does, do we need an amend, amendment for that to come back to the board, or is that already the process that would come back to the board? That's not the current process, so I would say so we probably would need the, do, we do would. put the amendment in to say bring the audit program. I would call it that's our term the audit for it. Program bring the, the audit board. program back to the board before the analysis phase begins. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the amendment to the motion on the table is that uh, the board would, as priority number three, do an audit to obtain data on LEA testing rates, opt-out rates, and the causes, reasons for the opt-outs with the caveat that it would be brought back to the board with the audit program before audit analysis begins. Any I'll discussion? Second. second. Any discussion to that motion? Uh, board member Stokes. Oh, sorry. Your not, your light's not on. Board member Bolter, you are up on queue. Do you have anything? My lights. Yeah, I do have. Oh, you're just on. Sorry. Hang I on. do have a comment to the whole thing, not necessarily to the amendment, but to the whole this whole audit thing. So I don't know when well, we the vote on time the amendment, and then we would vote on the original motion with the, as amended. Okay. So can I just make my comment now? Though? May I make my comment now? I guess it's you. Does it pertain to the amendment to come back? To us. <laughs> Wait I'll just until make it the, after. Okay. Does anyone have any comments on the amendment to the motion? Board member or Vice Chair Cummins. So I, I just like a, a quick question of the process. So when you but when you're establishing your program, mm -hmm. the audit program, how much contact do you have with LEAs during that time that would occur before you came back to the board and how much would occur after you came back to the board if that was our dividing point or action point. So to answer that question, it can vary a little bit. It depends on the objective of the audit and the information we need to move forward. Generally, as part of the planning phase of the audit, that's when we send out an engagement letter, which would say, hey, we need this kind of information. Um, we might come and do an on-site visit, those kinds of things. So generally, again, during the planning phase, that engagement letter goes out. Um, there are times with an audit we could request data as far as pl as part of planning and we'd say hey we need this data for you could you give it to us and then as we go into test work we'd request more data we'd follow up with the inquiry um, I would assume it would be more minimal generally it is during planning but so can I follow up yes please so I I would think that to catch the essence of the amendment would be to pull it back even prior to that uh, programming stage would be to come back to the board kind of with the, the scope of what type of questions and what kind of data you're going to be looking for would be if I'm understanding that board member Stokes correctly. So yes. So board member Stokes, are you agreeable to changing that terminology to scope instead of audit programming? Uh, I audit I thought program. my I thought my motion was perfectly, actually more than perfectly phrased and clear. <laughs> And the addition to the new language muddied the water. Sorry. Um, Can you state your amendment then? My amendment was that prior to this audit being conducted, that the methodology of this audit be brought back to the board before anything is done. I mean, that's, okay. the, mo that's the motion. Okay, thank you. But I, I, that wasn't my cue. I wasn't taken out of cue. I mean, I was in line here, and I got removed from being in line. Oh, I'm sorry. Because it was a question that was asked me, and I responded to it. But that wasn't my okay so do, so do you want to speak to so well I, I can we can we 
I don't know what an analysis, an audit analysis before it heading forward is. So that's why I'm, I, I wanted, I want to go back to this original. I don't want any contact with Give the outside second. world until we've had the discussion. Okay. So the amendment misstated by myself was seconded. So Lorraine, as our parliamentarian, can we with rephrase that amendment still? Here, hang on, I'm just trying to stay caught up myself. So let me just, can I help you with something here? Yeah, please. Okay, we have a, mo we have a recommendation, a motion that went to the board <laughs> that the committee moves that the board approve as a priority number three in audit to obtain data on all LEA testing rates, et cetera, et cetera. Board member Stokes went to comment on that, and then that got kind of turned into an amendment, which doesn't take away or add to the original motion. This is how I see it. Maybe you can speak to this, um, Lorraine, on this. So we're back to the very beginning motion. If we want to do what Spencer's wanting to do, it basically gets killed. The original motion gets killed and it goes back to committee based on these comments that say, okay, what betterments are you wanting right. to? Okay, so you want us to vote on the original motion and then do his. We're, we're at a place here where if that wasn't Spencer's second, if that second wasn't what he wanted to do, right. then I withdraw my second. And so okay. we're not going to vote so on anything. So we're back to the original motion Okay. with a lot of people having comments. So Sorry. are you... Or, okay, can we do that? That's the question. Okay, you have, you're on. Okay, I'm going to suggest that in your original you said that we wouldn't do the audit, which kind of goes right. totally opposite right. from the motion. If you just change it to say um, that basically you approve the audit being placed on the list and before the audit planning begins the methodology be brought back to the board i think then that adds to it it's still a, you're still approving the audit with the caveat does that make does that is that what you want spencer no you just no. don't want it approved no. okay so he just wants to vote no on this yeah okay that's right okay yeah. thank you so so i withdraw my second you don't have my <laughs> spencer spencer you took your light off Remember, you took my light on. I don't control no, it. I don't it control it. Okay. I turn it I, on, you turn it my on. My original amendment to the motion was that we do the audit, but that before the audit's done, it's the methodology comes back to the, the full That's board. That's what you just said. And then, yeah, I didn't say ever to not do the audit. I was saying. Okay. That's okay. what Lorraine just said. Are you agreeable? Yep, absolutely. And I'm good with the second. Okay. So, so the amendment on the table is that we do the audit as approved by the board, but that it will be brought back to the board before, the with the methodology before any auditing happens, mm -hmm. any planning happens. Well, planning is the methodology. No, just the methodology is brought to the board. I know what you mean and we'll go with it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so any discussion of this motion, um, Laura Belknap is in queue. I'd like to make an amendment to the amendment that it be brought back to audit and then presented to the board. Second. You seconded it? Yes, I seconded so now, now it. So, discussion. Yes, now I'm in charge of it. Sorry, thank you. Um, so now we'll have a discussion to the amendment to the amendment, which just adds that this will happen in audit committee before it's brought back to the board. Any discussion to that? Laura, did you want to speak to your amendment? Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, out of full disclosure, I was actually under the assumption that this did um, satisfy the ESSA plan request, and that was part of the reason for it. But now, in full disclosure, that does not do that. And then with this understanding, when we have this understanding, then what? If we know why kids opt out, then what? And I still think most of the information is going to be anecdotal from this audit rather than factual, like you would have in a performance audit or a financial audit. 
Thank you. So is there any further discussion to yeah. the amendment, to the amendment? Okay. Sorry, are you trying to speak okay. to that? Okay. Okay. So uh, board on. member Cummins, was your comment on the amendment to the amendment? Sorry, superintendent, I didn't see you. It was in response to the amendment. Okay. 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 <laughs> superintendent Dixon. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify the ESSA uh, comment, and we'll, we can talk more about this this afternoon, but the, the audit was actually something that we discussed with the Department of Education when we were discussing um, our intentions for ESSA. So it's, it's part of it. I, I mean, I, we'll talk about it later, but I just don't want to leave it hanging out there that there was some misnomer that this had nothing to do with it because that's not accurate, but we'll save it for later. Okay, so we'll go ahead and vote on the second amendment, which is uh, that we will prioritize an opt-out audit. Can, it does, it has to be specific, or can I just name? That it just go to audit committee, so I can just say that part. Thank you. That, the, that it goes back to audit committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The voting was unanimous. So now we will go back to the first amendment as amended, which is that it comes to the board to approve the methodology after going to the audit committee. Goes to the audit committee and then to the board to approve the methodology. Any discussion to this amendment, board member Cummins? Thank you, Vice Chair Ellis. To me, this is putting the cart before the horse. I don't know that I want to approve an audit before I understand how it's going to be asked, who's going to be asked, how they're going to be approached. Um, I'd rather know that first before I say yes, let's go ahead with the audit. So, I mean, because we're going to, if we approve an audit, then it's already going to go forward. It's just how it's going to be done. I'd rather know beforehand, I'd first before second. Thank you. We could vote to withdraw the audit after the methodology is discussed. Is that correct? At any at time any you can. At any time. time. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion to this amendment? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Voting was unanimous. So now we will begin, we will be voting on the original motion as amendment, which is the committee moves that the board approve as priority number three, an audit to obtain data on all LEA testing rates, opt-out rates, and the causes, reasons for the opt-outs that will then go back to the audit committee where methodology will be discussed and then brought to the full board for approval prior to beginning. Any discussion to this motion? Board member Bolter. Okay. Um, I'm trying to hold my emotions in check. Um, state law requires that we audit an LEA for non-compliance to um, when a parent chooses to opt out. And we've had a lot of phone calls regarding that and nothing's been done. But now we are okay to audit parents for why they choose to opt out because that's who we will be auditing. We will be auditing the parents. And the parents, they don't have to answer to us. That is their parental right. And this just completely, anyway, I just, um, basically they don't need an answer to us why they're choosing to opt their child out. So this audit is just absolutely wrong. We have no right to ask the parents why they're choosing to exercise their parental right. No right whatsoever. Thank you. Board Member Reby? You can opt out of opting out of the audit. Um, I think that if you felt strongly about opting out of an assessment and you were given an opportunity to explain why you're opting out, that could guide our decisions. I would take advantage of that if I was opting out my students. Um, some of the reasons why I've heard people opt out is because they feel that the test doesn't reflect the um, doesn't give enough um, latitude to their students with disabilities. That's something that we can work on. If we felt the test was too lengthy, that's something we can explain. 
Um, I, I want to know why people are not happy with some of the things we do. And I think this gives them a great platform. If people choose not to respond, we can't hold them accountable, but we can give them a platform to speak to us in another venue. Um, I, I don't think this would be considered something that had, if you didn't fill it out, you, didn't, you had to take the test. We can't force anybody to do anything. So um, I think this is just another avenue where people might be able to give us their opinions and their thoughts about why the test is valuable or not valuable. Board Member Cummins. Thank you. I, to Board Member Bolter's comment, though, I think we already do that with the amount of calls and complaints that we're receiving because of the process that we already have, and nothing is being done to address that, even down to the district level. We're seeing um, mass confusion, um, especially in the classroom with the teacher's interpretation of, of our role. So it's, it's, cause a, it's a, causing a bigger problem than what we should be doing, looking at with this audit, um, again, it's that what comes first, who's on second type of thing deal. And, you know, I think we should do first things first before we second. Thank you. Board Member Warner. You know, I, I understand what Board Member Bolter is saying, but I, I think I, I really like Board Member Reby. I, I would really like to know why um, I've I have opted a daughter out, and but I've not called on a hotline why and explained why. And so it would be interesting to see if we need to be shaping our decisions with why people are, are opting out. I think it's a great time for us to explain that maybe the test is really lengthy. Maybe it doesn't conform to something. Maybe we're spending a lot of money on testing and not enough money in the classrooms. There may be a variety of reasons why we we have people opting out um and so i i think that this would be we don't have to have parents that are, that are cooperative or maybe they don't want to tell you why but i think it may help shape some of our our decisions because clearly something's going on and people are opting out so i think this may but i agree with with board member stokes i'd like to know what what we're doing beforehand um board member wright Oh, thank you. I, I, I just don't like the, the word audit. It, it just it sounds a bit scary, like these parents have done something wrong or we're checking to verify that they're complying with something. I would I, Something like a survey. I mean, if you just told me we're going to send an email or even a, a letter to every parent who opts out and ask them and even have a multiple choice and even a free form response, because if they want to expound for a thousand words on why they're opting out, I think that might be of interest. And, and so it's genuinely an inquiry to find out rather than, you know, you're not paying your taxes kind of yeah. approach, which, which it, it just seems to be when, when you use the word audit. I mean, so I'm just, Debbie, am I too conspiratorial here? Or is, is that some truth to it? I mean, is that what you're planning on doing anyway? Or what were you planning on doing, like hauling them in or, or what? Tell me more here. <laughs> So to speak to that quickly, uh, again, we, we haven't planned it. It would be part of the methodology that we'd want to bring back to you. I, I like the idea of a survey, a free form. Audit does have a stigma with it. Um, people perceive it differently, right? It can be scary. It can be fine. It can be value add. It can be assurance. It can be a lot of things. And I think as we put a survey together and craft questions to try and get the feedback to meet the objective of what we're trying to do, we'd really want to be careful with the language that we're using. We, you know, maybe not using audit. We don't want to do that because we don't want to scare people. So I think we can craft that and use language and make sure our tone is appropriate. Again, to get to, to put the questions together, to get the feedback, to meet the objective of what we're trying to do, which is get information to inform decision making. Thank you. Uh, Board Member Reby, did you have an additional yep. comment? So when we started this discussion, I kind of stated that this is kind of an opportunity for us to create a experience across all districts. Right now, the pushback that I get is that parents aren't getting the same experience from district to district. So if it's a link that gives everyone the same information, that would be beneficial to our organization and to all the LEAs. So they would have a uniform experience because you are required, you aren't required, you are suggested to use the state form. In my district, if you don't use the state form and you call up and say, I don't want to take the test, that works. Um, as a teacher, I have a responsibility as a person who assesses the whole school 
my responsibility is to say that this is the form I received, this is the communications I made. I, I can't just say as a teacher my kid decided he didn't want to take the test today. I have to contact that parent and say, are you aware of this? They say yes. I'm like, great. Could you fill out a form? I don't feel like it. Okay, I'll just write it down that you didn't want to, and then I talk to my principal. We want accountability, and you know I'm totally fine with whatever my constituents want to do. But to call it an audit, I guess would be you know maybe make people feel bad. But to have a uniform experience in a in an audit fashion might benefit our our organization. So I'm always for more information. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, before we take a vote, I would like to make a comment as well on this item. Um, I have been stating for a long time that um, instead of trying to convince people that this test is good for them, that we need to be asking them why. However, when I saw this pop up on the audit agenda or summary of actions, I had an uneasy feeling um, because I'm concerned about the methodology. And so I appreciate Board Member Stokes' amendment to this so that, that we can come through because I agree. Um, people, we need to we need to let people express why. But what I'm concerned about is that we have an approved ESSA plan right now, and in, basically we've said in this ESSA plan that we will figure out why opt outs are low and remedy the situation, which flies, which is in direct conflict with what state statute currently states, is that people or parents are allowed to opt out without any ill effect to the schools. And now we're telling the federal government that we are going to remedy this situation. They don't mesh. They don't, they don't work together. And uh, I have huge concerns with that. And so um, I'm going to vote no on this because I'm concerned about how it's going to move forward. But I, I also wait with great anticipation of what methodology is used for this. So anyways, is there any further discussion? Oh, Board Member Hansen. I move previous question. Okay, so we have a on the table call the question. So we need a three quarters vote to approve that. So all in favor of calling the question? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the question is called. So we'll go back to the original motion on the table as amended that the committee moves that the board approve as priority number three an audit to obtain data on all LEA testing rates, opt out rates, and the causes, reasons for the opt outs, and that it will come go back to audit committee to develop the methodology and then come to the board for approval. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Okay, can I have the ayes please raise your hand? We've got board member Chair Huntsman, board member Reby, board member Warner, board member Gravit, board member Lear, board member Stokes, board member Hansen, board member Cannon, board member Wright, board member Cummins. Vice Chair Cummins, sorry. And do you need that? Okay, so the no's are board member Cummins, board member Belknap, board member Bolter, and board member Vice Chair Ellis. Thank you. We'll go back to Brittany. Okay, um, the next item, 7. Dot three is the School Children's Trust compliance reviews. So we had a member of the School Children's Trust section come and give a report on their compliance reviews. And so the motion for the board is to accept the corrective action remedies outlined by the School Children's Trust section and online training, sending information to LEAs discussing policies, procedures, roles, and responsibilities with the Trust Advisory Committee. Sorry. This is the motion. Okay. I mean, I just tell you. So the motion on the table is that the audit committee moves that the board accept corrective action remedies outlined by the school children's trust section. Did you say all that? Example, in person and online training, sending information to LEAs, discussing policies, procedures, roles, and responsibilities with the trust advisory committee. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing no discussion, we will vote on the previously stated motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. That concludes the audit committee. And that concludes the audit committee report. Thank you, Vice Chair Cummins, for taking that on for me. We'll turn the time back over to Chair Huntsman. Um, 
Well, we're attempting to get back on schedule, but it is. So that concludes everything on the on it. Yeah. Um, at this time, we're going to break for our lunch. We're going to try to get another report in before lunch, but. Well, and, and people want to do quickly do law and licensing too. Um, is there any objection that we knock out a few committees before lunch? Am I, am I seeing any? Can we move this forward? Okay, if I'm not, I'm not, I'm not seeing any objections, but we'll see. Um,